Greetings, Skyfarers, and welcome to another episode of Sunless Skies. I'm Cobalt Thorium, and we are at Perdurance. Um, I don't really know what to do here. I think we have to go through the day at least one more time. Uh, we're trying to figure out... Trying to figure out how to get... Oh, he can locate the counselor's agent. We might have to force them. I didn't want to force them. Okay, we can locate the counselor's agent. They'll be trying to make themselves known to you. You must only look for their signal. Your contact. You drift nonchalantly about the room, observing and eavesdropping. At last, you come to a small corner table where one of the chaperones, a clairvoyant doctress, I didn't know that she's clairvoyant. Anyway. Shuffling tarot cards. Oh, she... <laughs> I see. She is a clairvoyant, not clairvoyant. Um, uh, the back of the cards bears a distinctive, familiar pattern. The seal of the macabre counselor. You give the doctress uh, the slightest nods. She winks back. Please, sit. And bids... And let me part the veil twixt present and future for you. The ominous tones are perhaps taking it a bit far. Oh, jeez. Look at all this. Ah, she's wearing modish fashions, but without any adherence to society's opinion regarding color or pattern. Paisley's in magenta layer stripes of emerald and indigo. Her hair is a mousy color. Her eyes unremarkable. Her face is pleasing brown, but not particularly distinguished. The overall impression she gives is one of dazzling color and clashing patterns. A deliberate misdirection? She draws gruesomely hand-painted cards and lumpen crystals from a clinking beaded reticule and constantly smoke cigars. Jeez. I could introduce myself. Your promised help? Well, here it is. Clairvoyant uh, doctress tosses the edge of her floral embroidered carplet or caplet and runs a hand down equally elaborate bodice. What? What is going on here? We could get to know her. You like to know people you're committing crimes with. Easier to predict the likely moment of betrayal. Or you could return to the morning room. She finishes your reading with an elaborate, an elaborate flourish. You'll meet a handsome stranger in a mask this evening. You know, I think I'm getting the hang of this. Or we could tell her all is ready your escape. The sisters are willing to part. An avenue of escape has been identified. She prepared to do her part. Well, I suppose we should just go in order. So we introduce ourselves. The plan. I'm to be the heiress's replacement. Wait, I'm to be the heiress's replacement. We'll swap clothes, and perhaps a few other items. No one will know to look for her, because she's still here. Clever, yes? Perhaps your skepticism shows. She grins. Ah, you think we don't look alike? Wait, what is going on here? I feel like we were missing a few steps here. Like, this is the obvious answer. I mean, if the only difference between them is that one of them has black hair and one of them has brown, you dye the one with the brown hair black, right? Because she's competent and she's sort of kind of, like, conniving, while the other one's a bit of an airhead, right? But the one that's the bit of an airhead is the actual air. Airhead. H-E-I-R. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I feel like we're, we're skipping a few places here. Because it sounded like I was introducing myself to the clairvoyant, and we were going to try and s find some way to get them out. 
but not in a way that they would necessarily agree with. And now it seems like they're agreeing with this plan. We definitely skipped a few steps. There's, there's, it seems like a bug actually, but, um, I mean, the, this is the way I would have wanted it to go. So I don't feel like it's terribly buggy, but it's, it's buggy. Like you're skipping the middle of the story and just assuming that I would want to get the, the younger sister out because she's more competent. But anyway. Perhaps your skepticism shows. She grins. Ah, you don't think we look alike? Allow me to reassure you. It's a temporary inconvenience. Uh, I'll worry about that. You worry about finding an escape route. I'll recommend gossiping to the debutantes, chaperones, and servants. Every cage, no matter how gilded, has a la uh, has a hatch through which someone can remove the SHIT. You mentioned the complication of the surplus sister. Wait, what's going on here? Wait, who is... Oh. Okay. Maybe... I guess I misread this. So the... Um... What does she call herself? The clairvoyant is going to become the other sister? You mentioned the complication of the surplus sister, and the heiress refuses to leave without her. Quite. Is our, is our employer forgetful, do you think, or manipulative? Manipulative. It doesn't matter, of course. We're paid for a single sister, and I can't uh, split myself in two. You'll have to convince the Mrs. Macabre to separate, won't you? Okay. You're planning to escape with one of the Macabre counselor's daughters... Uh, find a way to, to convince the presumptive heiress and luckless sister to separate. Find a way to smug smuggle someone out of perdurance. Whoa. That's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff here. Okay. So, we're still talking about the clairvoyant doctress. You can get to know her. You like to know the people you're committing crimes with. Easier to predict uh, the likely moment of betrayal. Right and tight. Never you mind about that. Just stick to the plan. It'll be all right and tight. The clairvoyant doctress yawns elaborately and dismisses you with the majesty of a dowager duchess. What's that smell in her breath? Under the bitterness of the cigars. Candle wax? I can't be right. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if we go after these. I don't know. Drenched. It works, but all too well. Three servants collide in their haste, pouring, uh, pouring wine into your glass, onto the table, and mostly into your lap. We will I'll try the servants. Popularity. The servants discreetly share their admiration for your kindness and charm. Never did read what what happened when I won, did I? Whoops. Oh well. You try not to let it uh, to let it go too much to your head. 
there's very little competition in the field of kindness to servants here. You, re you leave richer in gossip and soothed by the distractions of the Half-Life mask. Hmm. How many of these do we have? We're going to run out soon. Alright, we'll give it one more go. Um... It's the only thing we can do. Actually, this might be new. Gossip with the debutantes. They have sharp eyes and minds under... Let's try that. Actually, have we read this before? The debutantes tell you the go uh, of the governess. The Empress agents who wear oval masks and featureless obsidian. They are only glimpsed in the passages between morning and afternoon. Between afternoon and evening. Between evening and dusk. Or possibly dawn. You hear stories of disappearances and secret tribunals. Of the interrogations and re-education. A court that lies beneath the court. There are hidden hatches in the passages. The doors of night. The governesses use them to remove those, uh, to remove those of us whose family displeases her majesty. You wonder whether you could make a certain sister vanish uh, in the same manner. After evening would be best. Okay. The counselor's daughter. When passing through the tunnels after evening, look for a hidden passage. Morning ends, it's time to move on. Wine and Secrets. Oh, this is the gossip of the chaperones. Where else to look for scandal but among the guardians of the of morality? Perhaps they know something useful about the macabre counselor's daughters. Wine and Secrets. Wine loosens their tongues. The order of the macabre counselor's daughters was, until recently... Uh, that's the older of the macabre daughters. Well, macabre counselor's daughters... Okay, let me start over. Wine loosens their tongues. The order, the older, jeez, I can't speak. Wine loosens their tongues. I need something to loosen my tongue. The older of the macabre counselor's daughters was, until recently, engaged in an affair with the Fulug, Fuluginous forewoman below stairs. A woman lacking social status or connection. You point out the regimentation of each cycle. How could the luckless sister possibly slip away to an assignation or an assignation? The chaperone, uh, the chaperones indicate the nearly dumb waiter. 
built to carry hot food and dishes from the stair, uh, from below stairs. A concealed door in the morning room apparently serves a similar purpose. Next time you visit, you should take a look below stairs. I don't want to do this on just one invitation, though. So we might be stuck. the dancing thing anymore because I don't think it actually serves a purpose. So the, these favors get reset. That's actually kind of a bad sign. Oh, here we can locate the governess's secret tunnels. You've learned the, that the governess Wait, you've learned that the governess, masked agents of Her Majesty, use hidden doorways in and out, in and out of passages between the Perdurance rooms. If you can find one, it would be exactly the escape route you need. The doors of night. The music ends. The dancing dies. The lights dim. The chaperones, like patient sheepdogs, herd the debutantes together. The door from evening opens onto a lightless passage. As ever, the debutantes gossip and giggle, using merriment as their shield against the gloom and the faceless figures it might hold. This time, you pass along the corridor until you, until you turn your eyes from the candles to preserve your night vision. You ignore the procession and study the dark. There cloaked figure in the featureless obsidian mask emerges from an unseen door. They glide alongside the procession, looking intently in each person's eyes. The debutantes look away, a touch of hysteria creeping into their jaw gelidity? I don't think that's a word. You search the walls uh, where the governess appeared, finding the crack of a closed door and the hidden catch that opens it. Uh, this is the escape route you, you need to squirrel away one of the sisters. On a future evening in Perdurance, when all else is in place, you will be able to make a move of this. Okay, you've located an escape route through the governess's passages between evening and the parlor. All right. Yeah, the chaperone taps us on the shoulder. We're not going to do too much with that. All right, I'm exhausted. I think I'm, I realize that this episode's going to be super short, but I think I got to wrap it up here. So thank you very much for joining. Um... I hope that you enjoyed this, and if you have, please like, maybe comment, maybe subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.